Hello, and welcome to California Middle Levine Experience Biology, The Living Earth. This is a program that was built for phenomena-based inquiry, with real California case studies, exclusive partnerships, and of course, support for all levels of learner, so all students can experience biology in a way that makes sense for them. Let's look at the structure of the program. We actually start every unit with an anchoring phenomenon. Each of those anchoring phenomena are broken down into multiple chapters, which include a case study where we look at an investigative phenomena. Each of the investigative phenomena is broken down into everyday phenomena, which are our lessons. And of course, everything that we do comes back to that anchoring phenomena, where we make sense and state a claim and show we truly understand the California Next Generation Science Standards in three dimensions. Let's look at how it works in action. Each anchoring phenomena starts with a video. We want students to see, we want students to think about what they're seeing. Most importantly, we want them to start asking questions about what it is that they're seeing in this anchoring phenomena. Then we give them a guided question. How can disease resistant genes help prevent HIV? Now we don't just want to give them that question and then give them some traditional lessons. We want them to focus on this question as they move throughout the unit. We want them to focus on anchoring phenomena. So we introduce the claim evidence reasoning document where throughout the unit, they're gonna be collecting evidence. They're gonna use that evidence to form reasoning, and then they're gonna use that reasoning to state a scientific claim to show they understand all three dimensions of the performance expectations of this unit. So as I said, each anchoring phenomena is broken down into an investigative phenomena in the form of a case study. For instance, in chapter 10, we visit a horse farm where we meet a foal that was born with ovarolethal white syndrome. And we use this case study and the story to look at genetic disorders. Now, throughout the chapter, we're going to be focusing on this actual story. We're going to be looking at the science through the lens of solving real problems. So at the end of the chapter, we come to the case study wrap up and we can apply all three dimensions of what we've learned. In this particular case, as we're looking at genetic disorders, students pick their own genetic disorder, they research it, and then they act as genetic counselors to explain to a family the cause and effect of that particular genetic disorder. Not only showing that they truly understand the science and can do something with it, but it also engages them social in social emotional skills as well. And so each of our investigative phenomena are broken down into everyday phenomena in the form of our lessons. And our lessons provide multiple ways for students to collect evidence about the phenomena that they're encountering. One of the ways they collect evidence, of course, is through inquiry. We've got great, quick, easy labs for students to really apply what it is they're learning and practice different concepts. In this particular example, students are taking red and white beans and using it to calculate uh, different phenotypes, right? It's quick, it's easy, it gives them a hands-on experience with what it is that they're studying. And these are great for quick, easy inquiry, but we have multiple options as well. There are inquiry warm-ups, we have data analysis lab, full explorations, argument-based inquiry, modeling labs, all the way down to STEM projects. Students can engage in the science in a way that makes sense for them. And there are multiple ways for them to engage, allowing you to differentiate in your classroom. To further differentiate, each of our chapter labs is available in two different forms. There's the core lab and the foundations lab. Now the core lab is what you'd expect to see in a chapter lab. but the Foundations Lab, students do the exact same inquiry. They focus on the exact same concepts, but they do it on a reading level that's about two grade levels below. So all students can do the same level of inquiry, but on a level that's appropriate for them. Students can also engage digitally through interactivities. In this particular example, students are looking at Punnett squares. So of course, we give them interactive Punnett squares where they can go in, check their own understanding, with the drag and drop activity, get instant feedback, then as they move forward, they can answer questions. And if you assign this to students, you not only get to see everything that they did, their drawings, their the answers to the questions, their kind of practice, but you get data from it. So you can see if that understanding truly took place. It's a great way for them to practice and apply the skills of science. Also online, you'll find our partnership with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The great videos, engaging animations, enrichment, and case studies are all correlated at point of use within the program and tied directly to the California NGSS to make integrating these resources easy to do. In addition, 
online, you'll find our partnership with Labster. Labster is a virtual lab company where students are presented with a mystery and then given access to a full multi-million dollar virtual lab in order to solve it. Let's see an example. Welcome to the Bacterial Isolation Lab, which allows students to practice plate streaking technique as many times as they need in order to successfully isolate single colonies. The premise of the lab is a report of ampicillin-resistant bacteria in poultry meat, illustrated with immersive 3D animations. Students visit the place of origin, a chicken farm, to collect a sample in hopes of identifying the bacteria strain. The sample contains a variety of bacterial strains, and students must identify which strains are resistant to ampicillin by isolating single colonies. Accessing the virtual lab, students learn how to use aseptic techniques. For example, remembering to turn on the Bunsen burner and sterilize their loop in between streaks. Quiz questions help students gain a deeper understanding of the technique. And just with all of our other interactive activities, students get a chance to go in, apply the concept, and you get data to see, did they truly understand, and what type of understanding came out of that activity. Now, since we're online, let's go ahead and take a look at our downloadable and interactive text on Pearson Realize. This text is fully downloadable by chapter, so students can work offline, and when they come back to school, they can sync back up and all their work will be saved. Here in the e-text, they have all the same text as in the print edition, but of course, they can listen to it. Also, we didn't just want to give them a flat PDF that just replaces the book that's in front of them. We wanted to make it interactive. So they can highlight. I'll highlight just like a high schooler here. So that entire paragraph's important. Change the color of the highlight, change it to a circle, change it to an underline. If you assign a lesson, you can tell them to go in and circle the main idea and underline the supporting detail, and you can see everything that they did in their book. They can even add annotations into their notes so they can know why they highlighted it or add some additional thinking to it. Now, as we scroll down, whenever we ask students a question in the book, we want them to be able to answer it. So there's this notebook feature as well, so they can actually answer the reading check questions that are built into the text. And we've built it to work with Google Translate. So just by a press of a button, you can translate our digital text into 103 different languages. And the text isn't the only place where students can read and write science. There are authentic readings built into the program where students will encounter journal articles and research that they can apply three-dimensional thinking to with additional activities. And to support students in reading and writing, we have the Middle Levine Biology Foundation's Reading and Study Guide Workbook, available in English and in Spanish, available print and digitally. In this, we have strategies that help all levels of learners. At the beginning of every lesson, there's a graphic organizer, a reading tool, that helps students become deeper, more effective readers of a scientific text. This doesn't just help our ELD students and our special needs students or even our struggling readers. This is actually strategies for all levels of students to help them become better scientific readers. In addition, at every lesson, there's a leveled summary, written about two grade levels below the core text. And we didn't just want to give them something else to read, we actually made it interactive, so we direct them to go in and label, and draw, and circle, and underline, and work with the academic vocabulary, do a close read, to help them again become better readers and writers of science. Now, the Foundations Guide isn't the only place where we support all levels of students. In the Teacher's Edition, at every single lesson, you'll find differentiated instruction for all levels of students. For instance, when we're looking at transcriptions, we support our ELD students at three different levels. And it's not just the same strategies for all three levels. So, for instance, our emerging students are going to be using sentence frames. Our expanding students do a structured writing activity. And our bridging students do the same expanding activity with that structured writing, but we also have them do peer editing. So all students get the structure that they need at the level that they need and are focusing on the same concepts. That continues through our other differentiated instruction. So when we're looking at mutations, our special needs students are doing a modeling activity. Our less proficient readers are working with cluster diagrams to help them organize their thinking. And our advanced students research physical and chemical agents in their own environment that might produce mutation. So again, all students at lesson level get the structure and the resources that they need to be successful with the same concepts. Now, we've seen multiple ways to engage students in the science. There are also multiple ways to assess them. So we have traditional assessment. 
lesson quizzes, chapter tests, benchmark assessments, all available in print and online and all fully editable. If they take it online, we do have technology enhanced questions. So drag and drop, drop down menus, my personal favorite, select all that apply. Great way to get practice for that CAS test. And when they do take the test online, it collects data. Now also online, we find our three-dimensional assessment available in print and online, fully editable, where they get a new scenario and get a chance to apply all three dimensions of the California NGSS to a different problem to see if they truly understand. Again, great cast pra test practice. Um, and for those of you who ex use ExamView, there are 3D question banks as well. There are item analysis for each one with depth of knowledge levels. And of course, there's performance-based assessment for every chapter as well. In this example, uh, from chapter 24, we look at the proposed wildlife bridge over the 101 in LA, and we have them design their own solution, do some research, develop models, you know, and communicate their solution to show they truly can take the science that they're learning and apply it to a real problem. Now, I mentioned that data would be collected online if students took the test there. Well, let's take a look at that. Here you can see I've had a couple of quizzes taken. I can see the progress. All my students have taken the quizzes. I can see the uh, usage rate, approximately how long they've taken on each assignment, class average, and individual students. But when I come up here and click on the test, I get actual data. So I can see in this quiz, there were two different standards that were assessed. I can see who mastered the standards, who didn't master the standards. And just by clicking on the standard, I can get resources that can remediate that particular standard. I can also see question analysis. So I can see most of my students missed number eight. That might be something I want to review with my students the next day. I can get student by student analysis or I can get performance analysis. So I can look at the overall score or the individual standards in the quiz, set my own breaking point. I always make 80% mastery. Click show performance and I can see students that uh, scored less than 80 percent. Looks like all of my students. That must have been a tough quiz. Um, students who scored more than 80 percent and then ungrouped students. Well I can see biology 2 over here got a 79 and I've talked to that student and I can see that they really understand. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag them over here and now I can assign resources to those students who need extra resources and I can assign enrichment activities for the student who I have deemed mastered that particular standard allowing me to really dive deep with the data and get students the resources they need when they need it. This isn't a program that has students just read a chapter and answer some questions. Students are going to be doing science. They're going to be interacting through hands-on inquiry, through digital, through reading and writing, and by solving real problems. So why Mill Levine Biology for a three-course model? Well, it's phenomena-based inquiry every step of the way with real California case studies exclusive partnerships with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and Labster. Most importantly, all students get a chance to truly engage in biology and experience in a way that helps them solve real problems. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and we hope to work with you soon.